Hello, everyone. Welcome to another week of school. And we're down to our last five lessons in art for the year. Can you believe it? We're going to make it to the end of this school year. So our last unit of the year is going to be pop art. And you've already learned about a few pop artists this year, but we're going to finish off the year with a few more uh, artists that you may not have heard about yet. So let's get started. Lots of fun things coming your way over the next few weeks. And I hope everyone is doing well and making good choices these last few weeks of school. I know it's not always easy, but it is important. So let's get started. All right, so on Thursday of this week, it will be one full year since Maggie and Molly went house hunting in the, in the pouring rain and ended up on my patio. So there's the very first picture of them together in my house. And here they are a few days ago. How it started versus how it's going. Boy, have they grown. They, Maggie used to be just to fit in my hand and now she's just a handful <laughs> she's really grown up hasn't she and here's molly wow has she changed she was stuck on that clothes basket there in that picture and now she doesn't get stuck on anything so she's gotten quite grown up so there's your kitten update for today let's start talking about pop art so what exactly is pop art? It's art with common popular items, <laughs> excuse me, as the subject. So you get to draw things that are just popular to life right now or common things that people use every day. <coughs> here I go. Every time I do this, I start coughing. So here are some examples of some things that might be the subject of some pop art that we learn about over the past couple weeks. Might, might be food, could be things that are just popular right now, like emojis, comic books, which we're going to be talking about here in a moment, things that are brightly colored and uh, attractive to people right at this moment in time. So I bet you see some of these things come up in our lessons over the next few weeks. I told you, you're going to enjoy it. So you've learned about some pop artists already this year. You learned about Wayne Thibod. You learned about Keith Haring. You learned about the artist, like Chris Uphughes and Yayoi Kusama, the polka dot princess of Japan. So you've heard about some pop artists already. We just have a few more we're gonna get to and a couple other things that we're gonna consider popular, popular art of people that are making art right now as we near closer to our summer break. So we're gonna get back in that time machine from last week and go to the 1960s. So we're gonna go back in time, not quite as far as we did last time, but we're gonna go to the 1960s because that is when people started making pop art, started drawing and creating things that were just based on popular things to them in their lives. And the first artist we're going to learn about is Roy Lichtenstein. And just like the word ornithologist last week, you can say Lichtenstein. Lich rhymes with an it, rhymes with itch. Lich in Stein. Lich in Stein. You can say it. So who was Roy Lichtenstein? He was a pop artist and he got his ideas for his artwork from comic books and advertisements. So things that were already kind of bright and attractively and flashy to people, that's what he based his art on. Now you may like comic books, or even if you're not a comic book reader, do you like graphic novels? Because if you do, they were inspired by comic books. So when Roy did his artwork, he used what's called bin day dots to add color, which that's just a way of adding dots to your artwork or to your or by printing 
instead of coloring it in solid. So it was all dots or dashes or, or, or um, diagonal lines, which you'll see in a moment. He also used four, mostly, most of the time, he only used four colors in his work, red, blue, yellow, and green. Now, he technically also used black, so there's five. Um, so, but he chose those colors because those were the, at the time in the 1960s, the general printing colors that were used for comic books at this time period. So here's some examples of his artwork. He did base his work on comic books. You can see how it's kind of dotty. That's because those are those Ben Day dots that you said that that he used. And he, you're also going to see a lot of things like word bubbles because that's very common to comic books and graphic novels, or just giant letters, giant words spelled out across his art. Here are a few. Now he also liked to make fun of or create parodies. That's kind of making fun of, making a parody of other works. So this is Van Gogh's bedroom, the actual Van Gogh's bedroom. And then he did his own artwork in his pop culture style of what, what um, Van Gogh's bedroom would look like. Okay, but for today, we are going to create some comic book words or just some word art today based on the style of Roy Lichtenstein. So I bet in language you've learned about some different ways to make your writing descriptive. Here's another one that says wham, okay? So like the words pop and blam and wham, those are all words that represent sounds. So if you had to describe what something sounds like, you would say pop, wham, bam, slam, ah. So those words all have a really fancy name. Boom, another one too. There's like a fancy, fancy word for all of these sound words like boom, zip, clap, all of them. And it is onomatopoeia. And I know that's like, whoa, big word. It's like saying Lichtenstein, onomatopoeia. And if you can't say it, just say, blah, 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 blah. and it's the same thing. But onomatopoeia are words that represent sounds. They stand for sounds like buzz, slam, crash, ding. Meow, woo, beep. If it's a sound, it's automatopoeia. I have a song on Schoology. It's a video of a, of a song that I found for automatopoeia to teach you some more words that represent sounds. It's a little corny, but if you'd like to listen to it, it's on there and you can enjoy it. You might get a laugh or two out of it. So what we're going to do today we are going to create some word art using some automatopoeia. So if you want to stop and look at the screen for a minute, pick a word, any word that represents a sound. If you want to be on the safe side, maybe you want to choose a word that's like pop or has fewer letters in it because that will help you out a little bit. I'm just showing you some of those examples one more time of what we're going to create today. You're going to see it in just a moment, but choose a word that's a sound word for your uh, project today. The shorter words are easier, but you can challenge yourself absolutely and choose a longer word here. I've got some examples and we're going to create our own pop art word in the style of Roy Lichtenstein. Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera back to me for a second. You can get your paper and your something to write with or draw with rather and something to color with and have it in front of you so that when I change over to my iPad so we can do this from my table, we can begin. Okay, everyone. You should see my table. And you should see an example of one of the styles of the project we're going to do today. So here's an example and you can choose different colors. I chose to use just the colors that Roy Lichtenstein used, which was red, yellow, blue and green. But you can choose to use any colors you want. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a automatopoeia word, a sound word. 
right it in the middle, and then we're going to make some basic lines and shapes around it to create pop art in the style of Roy Lichtenstein. So this is one example that I did, and you can see where I put some dots and some lines to represent the Ben Day dots that Roy Lichtenstein used. And here is another example with a created the same way with just a different word and I did the letters a little bit different. So you can choose to make your letters 3D or if you want to just write your letters big and then outline them if you so choose you can do that as well. You do not have to go over everything in a dark colored pencil or marker or crayon like I did for my outline. It does look nice when you do that, but if you don't want to or you just would rather not because you don't have one or have a dark marker or crayon, that is OK, too. It'll still be a OK. All right, so you get to choose the word. As I said, the shorter words seem to work a tiny bit better, but that's totally your choice. You can also before I get started here. I chose to do dots solid and then a line. You can mix it up. You can make them all solid, all dots. This is your choice. It's your pop art. OK, so I'm going to take these out of the way for a moment so that we can begin. All right, so let's get this started. I'm going to keep my paper turned landscape for this. All right, so you also may want a straight edge of some kind. It doesn't have to be a ruler. It could be just the side of a book. That would work too. And you're not going to use it too much, but as we get this started, think about how big the words want you want the words to be. Because if you make your words too big, your letters too big, you won't have a lot of room to draw anything else. So when in doubt, you can make your words a smidge smaller and just add things to the background. So what you may want to do is you may want to use your straight edge and lightly make some lines for where you want your words to go. About where on the word you want your words to be is to be as how as far as how tall you want them to go and maybe even how far out you want them to be. But I think if you're choosing a small word or a sh or a shorter word, you won't have that problem as much. Okay, so if I wanted to use the word pop as my word for my automatopoeia sound word for my comic book art, I'm going to start by drawing a P and I did say drawing a P and not writing a P because letters are technically artwork. You just don't realize that. And to do this, I'm not going to connect my P all the way down. I'm going to or all the way across here and make my loop. I'm going to come down instead and then connect it at the bottom to make it a little bit thicker. And I'm going to make a line and a curve to make my completed P there. All right, so I want to make an O. Now notice, oops, there just went my lead. Oops, that pencil's out of lead. Oh, there we go. Whose pencils are getting shorter and stubbier by the day as we get closer to the end of the year? I know, it's like a marathon. We're going to make it to the finish line, though. So you don't have to draw your letters very fast. OK, it's not like writing them in school. When we're drawing letters, we want to take our time. And don't worry if it's not perfect. See, I wiggled there. It's OK. That's OK. Makes it yours, makes it unique to you. And I'm going to come in the center. And connect it. All right. And now I need another piece. So I'm going to explain the word pop. And if your letters overlap a little bit, that's cool. I like the way that looks. If you don't like the way that looks, you don't have to make them overlap. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to do the same thing I did for my P before. I'm not going to connect it and I'm just going to come down and across and then make my opening in the center. All right, so I have the word pop. Now I like adding an exclamation point to mine just because if you're met, if something went pop really loud, you would be loud and you want to have an exclamation point to show that, wow, but it got your attention. So to draw an exclamation point, you can make like an upside down raindrop or it's like a loop that's pinched in at the bottom and then a circle underneath that. So pop. Now you have two choices here. You can choose to maybe 
just leave your words just like that and color them in and maybe outline them if you want to. Or if you want, you could make them 3D. And by making them 3D, you make it look, look like there's like a shadow going around them or there's a darker edge to it. So to do that, if you wanted to make them look 3D like that, because that takes a little bit more time here, it takes a little bit more, um, there's one more step, you can take your straight edge and maybe just pull it down a tiny bit, maybe a finger's width or maybe a pinky finger's width. And maybe you can, you don't have to, you can just choose to outline them, okay? But I would add another really light, light, oh, that was kind of dark. Very light line just to help yourself out. Just to give yourself some help. You don't have to do this. If you just want to outline them, they look really good too. Like I like the one that says bang, just the way I drew those letters. That's cool. All right, but we want to, if you're going to make them 3D, you want to go in one direction when you do this. So we're going to make some diagonal lines, but we're not going to go a diagonal line here and then a diagonal line going this way. I want them all to go in the same direction. So I'm going to go diagonal, diagonal, and then diagonal. You might want to grab that straight edge again if you want to, to be particular about this and connect it. Oops, I kind of moved my, see, that's why we take our time when we do this, because I moved my, I moved my, Holder too fast. There we go. And you can connect them like that. And if you need to clean up your lines, or maybe you don't want to make it quite as deep of a um, 3D effect, you can do that. But that's how you can make them three dimensional. And then I'm just going to add a curved line inside for my, to make my P look 3D on the inside as well. Right, and then I would just go across here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scoot my ruler up because I don't think I want mine to have quite that deep of a look. You can make yours look that way, though. If you want them to look really deep and like they're big, thick letters, that's cool. I like that, too. All right, so I'm just going to go around the edge there. And for O's, I kind of like to curve the line a little bit. You don't have to do this. If you just want to say, I'm just outlining mine or I'm just coloring them and I'm done. That's cool, too. They will look good regardless. It looks really cool when they're all finished. Okay, and this is kind of tricky when you've got them overlap, but you can do it. You don't even need the ruler for that. All right, so if you want to, here you, you now know. Okay, just go in one direction. I'm going to eyeball this exclamation point up here, and then I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow to my um, exclamation point dot. Okay, and then you are, I would go by before I do anything else and just erase the guidelines that you drew because you don't need those anymore. No way. No way. You don't need those. And like I said, you don't have to make them look 3D. Just write a word the way I just showed you and then you can go on your merry way. All right. Just outline it. But if you want to know, there you know. Okay, so to add the rest of these shapes here. If you want to make yours a little bit different than mine, you're welcome to. Okay, so I'm what I did on mine is I just went out a little bit from my letters, and I'd like to start in the middle. And then I decided to do some zigzag. So I'm going to make a zigzag bubble. You could do a, a like a cloud-like bubble, which is where you just make some curved lines instead. I'm going to show you what the curved lines look like in just a moment. But I'm going to make the zigzag bubble around my pop here. I just like the way that looks, okay? So there's my zigzags. And you don't, this, we're not drawing like the cardinal last week where we had to make soft, sketchy lines. You can press hard if you want to, all right? Press hard, my friends, press hard. And then I added some longer, so some like triangle shapes coming out from the edges here. Just some slanted lines that connect. They can go off the page. Roy Lichtenstein would use the entire page to do his art. He did not leave any part uncolored so if you want to i'm not going to color every single inch of my paper but don't be afraid to go all the way out to the page all right so i've got i added some triangles some other shapes coming out from it this is what i mean by the curved lines it's like a cloud bubble okay so if you want to add like this instead of the zigzags here you're welcome to you want to change them up you want to have it all be these curved lines instead? You're welcome to. Okay, put your own spin on it. That's what makes it unique to you. 
All right, so we have the basic outline here for our um, pop art word. So you can color these and I will show you very quickly here how I would color them. So to get you started, if you were doing it this way or even if you were, didn't do the 3D effect, I would start, you can just use the circular effect. You don't have to do like the feathery lines like we were doing last week because we were drawing something in nature, but you can color your letters in thick and solid because Roy Lichtenstein did not use value, trying to make things look like the light was hitting it. Nah, he was making pop art. He was making things look like a, um, like a comic book would be, flat colors or a graphic novel as we call them. Well, you could, you might still read comic books, but I bet you've read a graphic novel or two this year. I hope you've been reading this year because all the best artists read. Reading is good for you. Helps you use your imagination so you can create all kinds of things, whether it's art or something else. So you can color your letters in nice and solid. And yes, you know, you can use whatever you've got. Crayons, color pencils, markers. We make it work. Okay. And then for the shadow, what I did on mine is I just took a black and you could just use your pencil as well if you didn't have a black crown or color pencil. And then I colored in the the shadow going all the way uh, around. And don't forget the inside too. Okay, so this is just to show you how you would color that in what you would do next, all right? Now I'm going to show you very quickly how I did those other patterns and you can put those patterns wherever you would like. Okay, so as you see here in life, I were going to go, if I were doing this like the one I just showed you I did, I would go back and make my letters really bright and thick and colorful. But make sure you color that all in and that's how I got it started there. And if you want, you can outline your letters. You could leave it just like this, or you could outline them by going all the way around the shape like that, all right? So what I did after that is I added some dots because in honor of Mr. Roy Lichtenstein and his Ben Day dots, to make dots, I you make in circles, okay? Let's like this. <laughs> You can just fill it in with circles if you want to just color it in solid and then add some circles on top of it, add the dots on top of it, you are welcome to. But that this is all I did, my friends. Making little circles like this. If you want to color it in, you can, but if your crowns and colored pencils are getting kind of nubby and short and you want to save some color, then you might just want to do the dots. Right? And then I use this, or I use the color to do my solid shapes or use my a solid color for these shapes that I drew. You may choose to make these shapes that I'm coloring in yellow right now, the ones that have the dots or the lines, your choice. And then for to add the stripes, because Mr. Roy added a lot of stripes to his work as well, just draw lines. You can make them thicker if you wanted to, or you could make them thinner like this. I'm doing thin lines and the thicker lines on the other example I did, but either one is cool. OK. Right. So that is how you can get started on your pop art word. I hope you have a great time doing it and that it's fun. I just want to show you one more thing in case you choose a letter that is. Let me see here. Grab a sheet of paper. Might be a scratch sheet of paper that's got something on the back of it. But if you're doing a letter that is maybe per se. Um, like a. <clears throat> excuse me like wow like a w i'm gonna give you a hint here so if i'm drawing a w because i know sometimes the letters that are have lots of in, like an m or a w can be kind of tricky so i'm drawing my w <clears throat> when you do this sometimes we get a little tricky in here and we get upset because our letters some of them will be too skinny on one side and too thick on the other make a dot right there in the center. You can do this for an M as well. You can come over and down and then you can come up and then you can go over. So these are kind of symmetrical letters. Sometimes symmetrical letters are harder to do. 
and then you can come down to make that point in the center and that helps you helps you line them up like the wings of a butterfly to make your letters and then you can go on and create whatever word it is whether it's wow or woof or whatever it may be so this is our pop art that we're going to create for Roy Lichtenstein, the comic book words, the automatopoeia sound words. I hope you have fun creating it and that it is a bang and or it just makes your day pop. I don't know. I'm just being silly there. All right, friends, I will see you next time with another pop art project. I think you'll really like it. I promise it'll be colorful. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.